9.44. We're talking about the National Lottery because it is 20 years old today. 20 years ago, this week, the first draw happened with Noel Edmonds hosting the first draw. Uh, let's have a look at what it was like then, what's happened since. Breakfast Tim Muffin has this report. And the first ever National Live Lottery draw takes place on the BBC and the first... More than 20 million television viewers were gripped. November 1994 and a British institution was born. Over 20 years, the National Lottery has paid out over £53 billion in prize money and raised £32 billion for good causes. Causes such as Hackney City Farm in North London. A third of its income is from the lottery. It's been incredibly important and it's made a significant difference to, to what the work we do and the community around us. People are given a chance to get involved in gardening or in maintenance. This last few years it's been very difficult to find funders um, and there's lots of people looking for funding. At least the lottery is continuous. In all, more than 430,000 lottery grants have been awarded. The worlds of art, sport, education and health have all benefited, although some lottery funding has proved controversial. The £11 million awarded to the National Centre for Pop Music in Sheffield, for example. It closed in 2000 after just one year due to poor visitor numbers. Or the £600 million awarded to the Millennium Dome. Many were unconvinced that was money well spent. The National Lottery has also become the most popular form of gambling. Around 70% of UK adults regularly take part, according to the Gambling Commission, which regulates the industry. Hello, Gamcare. Gamcare run the National Gambling Helpline. It's certainly possible that it introduced uh, a form of gambling to people who may not have otherwise sought it out. Uh, it may have also normalized uh, gambling uh, in the society's perception. Do you think there are many people who are addicted to playing the lottery? There are some, yeah, and, and I think our concern obviously is if people are setting aside money to, to play gambling games uh, that should uh, go to essential uh, needs in their family and so on, that would be a concern. Winning big is unlikely, but how unlikely? Win, as you winning the jackpot, being six balls correct, is about a one in 14 million chance. So the chance of winning the lottery is about the same as the, uh, you will get killed by an asteroid in the next five years. I was born on August the 16th. Now, there's a one in 14 million chance that when I ask you your birthday, you will match me on my month, on my day, on the hour, on the minute, and within one second of when I was born. So let's see if I'm going to win the jackpot. What month were you born in? April. Well, that's a fat there you go. I've lost that. I could throw that ticket away <laughs> for a start. I haven't won. Statistically, buying a ticket to win money doesn't make sense. Yet for 20 years, millions have done so every week. And the chances are that won't change. Tim Muffet, BBC News. Uh, joining us now, John Moriarty, who's a lecturer in probability and statistics, who's going to explain some complicated things to us. Here, you see, John, you see what I've done here on the end of your blackboard? I've done a picture of me worried about what you're next going to do because you're going much. to do maths i am that's me alarmed okay are you going to explain things well we just heard that the chances of winning the lottery are one in 14 million so i'll just run through that calculation okay there are 49 different ways the first ball could come out so let's suppose first ball. the first ball L let's suppose that that comes out as a as a four there are now 48 ways that the second ball could come out. And so on. So 47, 46, 45, 44. So let's think about how many ways could the first two balls come out. Well, there are 49 ways for the first ball to come out. And for each of those, there are then 48 ways for the second ball to come out. So in total, for the first two balls, there are 49 times 48 ways for those to come out. And in, in exactly the same way, if we think about all six balls, then the total number of possibilities is given by multiplying all these numbers together. And if you do that, that's about 10 billion. About? Yeah, approximately 10 billion. And what is that figure? What does that 10 billion figure represent? That's the total number of ways that the draw could turn out. OK. And my chances of winning with one lottery ticket? Right. Well, in order... Suppose that these are your numbers 
then in order for you to win, then one of your six numbers needs to come out first. So instead of there being 49 ways for that to happen, there are only six ways for that to happen. So suppose that your number 18 comes out first. Then one of your remaining five numbers would need to come out second. So there are then five ways for that to happen. And similarly, four ways, three, two, and one. So in exactly the same way, the number of ways that you could win is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So that's seven, 720. So your chances of winning are 720 out of the total of about 10 billion. And if you simplify that fraction, that's where you get the number 1 in 14 million. Now, in the course of the 20 years the National Lottery has been running, I've only ever bought one ticket. Right. What are my chances of winning? That time, <laughs> that time you ah, had about one in see? 14 million. That's a what? It's that time you had about one in 14 million. Across the 20 years? If you were to play every week for 20 years, then your chances would be between one and two in 10,000 of winning the jackpot. Right. Do you play the lottery? Uh, unfortunately, no, I, I don't gamble. Probability doesn't help me necessarily to know which numbers are going to come up. It just helps me to understand and decide whether I want to play or not. Well, you don't, do, you don't, you don't not do the lottery on the basis that you've done all these figures and think, uh, fat chance. Well, I don't happen to gamble, but you can work out the value of a ticket. So if the jackpot is £10 million and you've got a 1 in 14 million chance of winning, then just thinking about the jackpot, the value of the ticket is 10 divided by 14, so it's about 70 pence. But people are willing to pay £2 for that. So people are paying extra for the flutter, for the possibility of winning this big jackpot. A lottery is kind of the opposite of insurance. So in insurance, you pay money to remove the risk and the flutter. In a lottery, you pay money to take on risk and flutter. So humans are actually a bit inconsistent. Um, they treat losses differently to the way they treat gains. Thank you very much for your explanations. Now, I'll, uh, I'll just wipe this one off here in case right. it's worrying people now. There you go. Oh, I don't know. I quite enjoyed your art. I enjoyed the explanation too. Thanks very much. Pleasure. Uh, it's time to talk to Nina to get a last look at the weekend weather. There's fog around Nina, but I'm sure there's a little bit of sunshine, surely. Yes, Nagar, I can give you a bit of everything this weekend. The